Hi everyone, and we'd like to uh, take this opportunity uh, to welcome everyone to our 2020-21 uh, State of Schools uh, presentation, and uh, certainly it is uh, great to be here in person. And uh, I think back to just over a year ago, uh, we actually had to uh, record this and then play it back, and those of us that were involved in the presentation it was just us uh, speaking to a bunch of empty chairs. And it was uh, nowhere near as much fun as what it is tonight to have some folks here in the audience. Uh, so again, thank you for being here. And uh, before we get started, I want to introduce uh, some of our Board of Education members uh, who are here with us this evening. Uh, first of all, we have our president, uh, Brian Yacobosi, who is here. Uh, we also have uh, Teresa Gillis, uh, one of our board members. And I believe uh, Valerie Niter is on her way here uh, this evening as well. And I know Mr. Zappa and Mr. Engel, I believe, had other commitments this evening and were unable to attend. So uh, again, uh, thank you uh, to our board members uh, for being here this evening. And again, this is the program where we want to pause uh, and reflect on those key components and those highlights uh, from the 2020-21 school year. And, uh, tonight, you're going to hear from our treasurer, our assistant superintendent, our director of student services, uh, our building administrators, and uh, just a team of folks here who are going to zero in and specifically highlight and draw attention to the accomplishments of our students and staff uh, throughout the year. Uh, we, we've received word uh, that the health commissioner has indicated that we are able to plan for a normal 2021-22 school year, which is certainly great news. And we're moving forward with those plans with our educational programming, athletic program, transportation, all of our procedures, and those types of things. So uh, we're certainly excited about that. But before we get to next year, uh, again, as I say, we want to pause and reflect on the accomplishments of this year. Thinking back to just over a year ago in March of 2020, uh, things changed for everyone uh, in terms of uh, the way uh, we go about things, uh, certainly in schools and across our society and businesses and how they operate and how we interact with one another, uh, those types of things. Uh, the, whole, the whole world changed as a result of the pandemic. But what happened, uh, and I just want to speak to some general kinds of things, is what really happened in the midst of these, this challenge is a lot of uh, neat things emerged and a lot of things that we were able to uh, learn uh, through being forced to adjust and adapt in terms of the way we provide education uh, in the midst of a pandemic. And as I reflect back and think about the 2020-21 school year, what stands out to me with our staff is the sense of collaboration. Our administrators, our teaching staff, our support staff work together to develop and implement a plan in conjunction with the health department that made sense for each of our four buildings as well as our transportation uh, department. And uh, as we work through this process, uh, and, and I've heard this mentioned by many of our uh, staff members throughout this year, is that the key to the success really can be traced back to our staff putting the needs of our students and the needs of our families before our own needs. And I think that is the key and has been the key to our success throughout this past year. I did want to mention too, uh, in addition to kind of the work that was done here on site, and certainly there was a lot of uh, anxious moments, if you will, and a lot of adjusting and improvising and adapting that we had to do throughout the course of the year. But I, I did also want to mention that none of this would have been possible this year without the support of Lorraine County Public Health. We're very fortunate to have a health commissioner here in Lorraine County that over the last year has met weekly with all of the Lorraine County uh, school superintendents to provide guidance, to provide updates, data that is pertinent to what's happening uh, and what has been happening in our schools. And that resource that we had, not just by the health commissioner, but his entire team there at Lorraine County Public Health was a key component, a key ingredient of our success over this past year in being able to provide not only an e-campus option or an online option for our students, 
uh, but also a five day a week in person option, which started way back on August the 27th. And uh, we are proud to say that we've been in session without any pandemic related closures uh, since August the 27th. And here we are in May 5th. So that's certainly something to be proud of. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Assistant Superintendent Mike Molnar, who is going to talk more specifically about our educational program in our eCampus and iCampus programs. Mike? Thank you, Steve. You know, before the school year started, we knew our goal the entire time was to serve the Embers community. So our first objective was to survey our families and to understand their concerns and questions and just their comfort level regarding the reopening of school this school year. So we analyzed the survey results when we got them in, and we found that a majority of parents were very interested in their children being educated in person, but with safety measures in place. We also found that some parents, obviously, were still concerned, and they wanted a remote option. So that led us to offering two instructional op options this school year, our eCampus program and our on-campus program. Now we selected those terms very carefully because we believe that by using our resources, our technology, all of our teachers and staff, and the knowledge and the passion that they had, we knew that we could provide an excellent education for all our students. The only difference being their location, either here at school or at home. And when the school year began, the breakdown for on-campus and e-campus was actually exactly the same as the summer of survey. About 74% of our students selected an on-campus option, and about 26% of our students selected an e-campus option. We also gave families the option to change campuses during the school year a few times. Because as we knew, uh, situations would change, community environments would change, and family situations could change. So we wanted to do that. And in the end, we strongly believed and knew that our educators could provide a high quality education, regardless of the option they choose or the switch during the school year. And everyone's done an outstanding and phenomenal job. As we all know, our eCampus students and teachers and parents, they definitely needed to adapt to that remote learning to make it successful. Uh, but it wasn't easy, and our on-campus students and teachers and staff also had to adapt. Opening schools and keeping them open safely, we set on five themes. Distancing, hand washing, screening, and assessing symptoms, sanitizing, and cleaning. Now, ultimately, we were guided by Lorain, Public, Lorain County Public Health, but in the end, we all knew that it was up to us to do our part to keep our students and staff and families safe. Now, once the school year started, we knew we needed to make the best of this very unique situation. So our teachers and staff really went above and beyond every single day, the entire year, to just do the best job we could. And if I had to select three words for the 2020-21 school year, I would have to say it was all about creativity, flexibility, and possibility. Here are two small examples. The first is just an example of students taking a break, getting, move, getting movement, getting engaged, and just taking a mass break on campus. The other one, while it might seem small, was a great idea about smiling buttons, allowing students to see that their teachers' faces and their smiles, which they might not get to see all year because of our masks. While those examples are kind of small, there was those kind of things that made a huge impact for our kids. The circumstances around the pandemic also had us change how we communicate. One example is our superintendent. He had to move from our in-studio conversation videos to weekly email updates where he, Steve shared important information, dates, upcoming events. We got a lot of great positive feedback about those emails. We also recognized how important we needed to create a streaming option of live events to accommodate all those community members who either couldn't attend or were not allowed to attend events in person. And we created a new program and service for our community called Comments Live. In addition to streaming live events, you can also watch those events later afterward on YouTube. 
We've streamed basketball games, wrestling, volleyball, football games. We've streamed concerts, Christmas carols, the 2020 National Honor Society ceremony, the Marianelle Steele Theater Group, streamed performances of their productions of Little Shop of Horrors and I Hate Shakespeare, and they raised funds in the process. And then just today, at Marianelle Steele High School, we had Military Sign Day, and so we streamed that live to celebrate and honor our seniors who joined the armed forces. Students also need fun experiences beyond the classroom. And this year, it wasn't easy finding those extracurricular activities. So we went to technology. Here are a few examples of what we were able to provide our students. The President's Own United States Marine Band hosted a Zoom session with the Steel Orchestra. Virtual drama camp occur for our fifth and eighth grade students, taught by the MLS theater students. We had virtual visits to the Rain County Community College and the Rain County JVS for any student interested in their programs and classes, and Wyoming State Museum visit for the Little Commons. That was a fun one. And one final one was when a class took a virtual field trip to Fort Humboldt State Park in California, and they learned and explored the redwoods of California with Park Ranger Griff. So those are the kind of things that we accomplished this year. I think it was a phenomenal, phenomenal year. Kudos to all of our staff, our Board of Education, and everyone for making it possible. We've received praise around the state, even around with friends and family around the country as we talked about how we perform with our on-campus and e-campus program. So congratulations to our staff, parents, students, and everyone. And now I'll turn this back over to Superintendent Stairs. Thank you very much, Mike. And one of the things we try to do here uh, in Amherst is to operate in a mode of continuous improvement. Uh, we, we never want to feel like we've arrived. Uh, we always want to continue to push forward and to improve in, in our offerings and what we're making available to our students in terms of you know, coursework and services and opportunities. And, and so this year is no different uh, in spite of the pandemic. Uh, again, we wanted to make sure we're providing our students with the best opportunities possible. And what we want to do at this time is to give each of our principals an opportunity to share specifically some of those things uh, that occurred at each building. And uh, we're fortunate to have with us tonight uh, Joe Tellier, our high school principal, Andy Gibson, our principal here at Amherst Junior High School, and then we have Jill Giovinazzo, who's our principal at uh, Nord, and then uh, Brian Tepner was in, unable to be here this evening due to a family commitment, so uh, filling in for Brian is uh, Corey Engel, our assistant principal here at Powers, and to kick things off, we're going to go with uh, Mr. Tellier at the high school. Thank you, Steve. Uh, it's been a, you know, as Mike and Steve has shared, it's, it's been a eventful year for our learners and educators at Steel. Uh, there, there's a few highlights, there's so many to talk about, but I, I just kind of wanted to focus on the teachers because as we heard earlier, the teachers really embrace the change. You know, and I, we told the teachers on the first day, they're gonna, with all this uncertainty, no doubt our students are gonna follow your lead. So, you know, if we just kind of take breaks when we need to, we created a different schedule when we, when we needed to, but if, but if we handle our business and we take care of the kids, everything else will fall in place. So a new teacher, ironically enough, uh, Stephanie Boggs, it's the first year she has been um, a technology teacher for us. And even though it, it looked different, you know, we, we're not able to go to LCC. She created partnerships. There we go. She created partnerships with LCC and the Chronicle Telegram. One of the coolest activities they did, if you guys have watched Shark Tank, there's an opportunity to come up with a business plan in her class, come up with an invention that would make basically society better. 
And so that was just a great opportunity for her students to, like I said, create, you know, find a need, create something, and then still, even though they could not go to LCC and present and have competitions, it's something they were able to do. We hear Zoom all the time. It's just amazing. Uh, our new lingo, how we handle things. But uh, you know, they would Zoom and they would compete and they got a lot of feedback. And, and it was just a, an example of having partnerships. Even when we couldn't travel, we couldn't do those field trips we wanted. We found out a way to make it work. Um, Kim Haney is our med tech teacher and she does amazing things as well. And if Kim Haney isn't doing 10,000 things at once with her hair on fire, she's not happy. So, you know, she definitely, she found a professional development that we all took advantage of our first day back from spring break. And it was, it's entitled Sources of Strength. And it's on the surface, it is a suicide prevention program. But really what it does, it just talks about training students as peer leaders and finding those sources of strength. And it really helped us as a, even as a staff to kind of identify, because even though our students were struggling, it was sometimes, you know, social, emotional wellness even for our staff. So I think there was a lot of buy-in from our staff to get trained. And we're excited because her students will be the ones kind of running that and facilitating um, that initiative next year. Um, kind of an interesting story. We, you know, we, we did two classes, an AM and a PM, and we, we did some different things with our schedule. But we did, this was the first year of AP Music Theory. And it was a new class. And if you were very involved, it, it's more of a the theory and the study behind music. So if you were interested in band or choir, but you really wanted to kind of get that advanced placement feel, uh, but it was a new class and a lot of people were a little nervous. So the only two people that we had taken were actually eCampus students and they flourished. And I say the, the numbers tripled as I looked at now the, um, the course requests for next year, we have six. So already, I mean, for a second year AP class, um, for that to go to six, and then who knows where it's gonna go from here. But just another example of educating our students, even when they weren't in the building. Um, you know, just like, again, teachers getting creative and flipping the classroom and doing so many things via Zoom that, you know, ordinarily, if you'd asked them even a year ago, they they just wouldn't have been able to do that. So our, our skill set, I think, is also something that um, has grown in leaps and bounds. Um, it's not up here, but one more thing I wanted to talk about, um, our eSports program, and with generous donations from Nord, last year we had six high-powered computers for gaming, and I'm, I'm not, as people will tell you, I'm not the most tech savvy, but when I go into this esports arena, it's amazing. It's, it, there's a, and I, and I took some notes here, there, we have an Overwatch um, team. And what Overwatch is, from what I've been able to gather, it looks like a team of six individuals. And what they do is these individuals try to go and, and, and take payload and supplies from somebody else. And, and you kind of think, okay, you know, what's, you know, how, how important, how, how interesting is this really? Well, our team is now 12 and two. They've made it to the state championship. And when you look at colleges, when you look at there's actually professional um, Overwatch teams, it's, it's really amazing. And listening to Brian Rubinsky, who is in charge of this, he says, Joe, I mean, we might be able to make it to nationals because we only have one junior. Everybody else is freshmen and sophomores. And he said, there are so many scholarships, there's so many opportunities. So not only academically did we um, rise to the occasion in this tough time, but I, I think also obviously athletics, but you know, an example of, our esports taking off and doing great things uh, in spite of this is uh, it, it's, it's really been a great thing. Um, I 
at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Principal Gibson. Thank you. Sorry, I'm the shortest administrator we have, so the microphone has to move, but I'm used to that. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of education about how this year is a lost year, but I'll tell you in Amherst, it's not a lost year. That's one of the things that I think we're most proud of at the junior high, is that it has not been a lost year in Amherst, and that's thank thankful that uh, we have a board of education that was willing to listen to our, our central office staff, and the central office staff who was willing to pull the community and make sure that they were they were a part of the decision-making process, and I'm really proud of what we were able to accomplish this year at the junior high. Um, one of the biggest things that we did was introduce a PBIS program, and this program was highlighted and headed by Mrs. Newhoff, our assistant principal at the junior high. Uh, but PBIS stands for Positive Behavior Intervention System Supports. And the biggest thing that it is, is we're teaching kids how we want them to act versus yelling at them when they don't meet the expectations that we've set. And if you think about how we learn everything else, it's mostly not by trial and error and then we get yelled at and then we change. It's about our parents and the adults in our lives, the teachers, the, you know, your coaches, creating this culture of expectations and setting the bar high that you're then trying to meet versus that kind of negative connotation of how we've done things in the past. And that's why you hear a lot about PBIS right now. You're going to hear about it from NORC because they've done an amazing job there too. But PBIS, I think, is something that's really changed the culture of our building. And again, I have to give that credit to Mrs. Newhoff because she spearheaded that for us and it's done a lot of great things. Uh, another thing we're excited about at the junior high is Team Polaris. Uh, we teamed this year at the junior high and Team Polaris is being recognized by the Ohio Middle Level Association for their work in teaming and student recognition. Uh, I want to give special mention to Katie Ennis, Brian Sospansky, Cindy Giacobi, Wendy Kirshner, Sandra Malat, Mariana Hines, and Kelly Funderburg uh, for their work with their kids this year. They're being recognized tomorrow night at an award ceremony in Sandusky for their uh, amazing advocacy of students in our building and just constantly meeting kids where they're at and growing those kids and creating an atmosphere that was welcoming and inviting and then celebrating kids. And ultimately, that's what we're here for. We're here for kids. So uh, I think it's incredible that they're being recognized for that work. And just another example of something we could be really proud of here in Amherst. Going along with the teaming at the junior high, we did a ton of competitions. We had attendance competitions. We had team competitions. We had spirit days, different things like that. It was really fun to watch the kids come together, even the teachers. Uh, Mrs. Newhoff and myself, we kind of rolled this over into our staff meetings. At the beginning of every staff meeting, we would have a competition for the adults and to watch them get excited and work together and compete against each other and then just laugh about it at the end of the, the competition was a lot of great fun. So this year at the junior high, like I said, to start, people say this was a wasted year, but not here in Amherst and definitely not at Amherst Junior High because we had a really great year together and did some really great things and I'm really proud of the building and our staff and what we were able to do. Uh, so those are just some of the highlights this year, and I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Jill Giovinazzo. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. So at Nord, we are piggybacking off of what Mr. Gibson said about PBIS, and one of the developments we've had is the continued development of our PBIS program. It's approach, like Mr. Gibson said, that we use to ensure that our systems and the way we operate are conducive to the successes of all of our students. We have upgraded the distribution of our token economy system, previously known as Common Cash. So this year, we um, are giving points virtually to our students, and that allows our e-campus and our on-campus students to be able to earn points and collect prizes. So we have a virtual school store that opens every Friday and our students are able to purchase items from the store or experiences which have become um, a favorite of everybody else. So then we fill the orders all week and they are delivered to homerooms or they're left in the office for eCampus parents to pick up or they are delivered electronically. And it's really fun to watch students wearing their hats to school through Zoom that they were so excited to do from home or their pajamas to school. Um, the coveted prizes are Rides in the Police Cruiser with Officer Layfield, 
and bringing your stuffed animal to school. So uh, they've also learned um, learned about the law of supply and demand because as the police cruiser rides got more popular, they got more expensive. So our students are very excited that um, as they were earning their awards, the, the students that got in before it went up are really happy about that. <laughs> um, here you'll see, uh, as part of the program, we focus on different quality character traits and honor those students and staff who regularly exhibit these traits, such as gratitude, self-discipline, and this month we're celebrating perseverance. As our superintendent mentioned earlier, COVID caused us to tweak the way we provide our typical experiences, but it didn't change the quality of education that we provide for years for our students. If you look here, um, we always pass out Valentines, and this year, our eCampus teachers worked really hard to be able to create virtual Valentines with their students and then display those at school. This is Mrs. Bailey with her class's virtual Valentines. And then another thing that we've done is trying to maintain the face-to-face -face connections that we've had for meetings and other activities. Um, we've done use Zoom for PTO meetings, for conferences, for student services meetings, meetings, and it's been very important to us to since we can't do in-person things, to be able to see people face-to-face -face rather than just over the phone. Um, it really seems to have a really strong connection. So it's been a difficult year for our students, but they remain hopeful about the future. We encourage them to express themselves about what they're looking forward to most. They plan on having buckets of fun this summer after not being able to do so last year, and they're sharing all of that with us at school. Next here, Superintendent Corey Engel, or I'm sorry, that was silly. <laughs> Next, Assistant Principal Corey Engel, to let us know. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> Um, Thank you, Jill. Uh, first and foremost, um, I have to say one of the best parts of this year is getting to be in this building. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, we opened the building last January and promptly went to e-learning um, in March, so we only really got to be here for two months. Um, this building has provided us with amazing opportunities to support our students this year and really allowed our teachers to think out of the classroom into the common spaces um, to meet our students um, where they are. And it's been wonderful to watch not only our students, um, but also our staff really get to use um, this building and all that it has to offer. While we have done many fun and exciting things throughout this school year, um, one of the coolest things was learning more about elections and democracy through the lens of something near and dear to the students' hearts, the playground. Our playground needed a replacement panel, which provided us with a unique opportunity. Our third grade students campaigned for various panels, including creating videos and posters, and our building voted for their favorite one. As a part of the process, students were given an I voted sticker, and we worked with, sec with Ohio Tech Secretary of State Frank LaRosa's office to have an official results video created. As you might imagine, this made the election process more relevant for our younger students. One class returned the favor with their own thank you video back to the state. With the creation of two campuses, we knew some things had to change and that we may even get to have some fun along the way. Enter the world of recording morning announcements over the video. Traditionally, morning announcements were done over the PA, but with the creation of our eCampus, we need to get creative and be inclusive. This began with Mr. Tepner producing videos, but now teachers and students, with some help from Mrs. Sears and Mrs. Schwartz, are producing videos each morning. Through these videos, we celebrate birthdays, share school events, lunch choices, and student celebrations. I will attempt to show you a brief compilation of some of the announcements. Lastly, I'll echo what Principal Gibonazzo said about virtual adjustments. By moving to virtual meetings out of necessity, we have increased parent participation in PTO meetings and IEP meetings and student conferences are more convenient for our families. And while I'm sure we will have parent teacher conferences in person and PTO meetings back in our building, we will still provide options for families to participate virtually because they have shared that not having to leave work early Rush home to get dinner on the table or find childcare in order to participate in events has been beneficial. Our teachers also have learned new strategies for virtual learning that they plan to incorporate in the future. Overall, it's been a great year, and I thank our students and our staff and our families for their dedication to learning. 
Next, Director of Student Services, Sarah Walker, will discuss some student achievements from this school year. Thank you, Mrs. Engel. So, we've got so many amazing and great things that have happened around the district this year, but I get the privilege of sharing some of the specific student accomplishments that have come up this year. And while there are so many that it's impossible to name all of them, I'm going to share with you just a few. So, 11 students won awards as part of the 53rd Lorain County Region Scholastic Art Exhibit at the Stocker Center at Lorain County Community College earlier this year. This includes Paige St. Peter and Katie Perez, who each won two Gold Key Awards. Jacob Robinson of Steel received the Public Art and Culture Scholarship from Leaders of Today for his art piece entitled, When Surrounded by Darkness, Reach for the Light. James Simer, also of Steel, met virtually with the legislative aid of U.S. Representative Jim Jordan to advocate for permanently offering free meals to our students. Alyssa Van Dress of Steel and Anna Bach of Nord were named 2021 Toni Morrison Scholars by the Community Foundation of Lorain County. And then, with the help of her father, power student Sophia Lee Trista co-authored her first two books, Bug on a Bike and Park in the Dark. As a result of the Chronicle Telegraph's design ad in an editorial contest between Nord, AJH, and Steel, 12 students had editorials published in the paper and 24 designed ads for local businesses that also ran in the paper. Now back to Mr. Sayers for some of our 2020-2021 athletic accomplishments. Thank you so much, Sarah. Just wanted to take a minute and highlight uh, some of our athletic accomplishments for the 2020-21 school year. It, it, was, uh, it was a successful year in so many different ways, uh, including athletics and in, uh, uh, in terms of SWC championships, we had a uh, boys basketball championship, girls bowling, as well as hockey, boys swimming and diving, and boys cross country. We also had uh, our, our, with our bowling programs, our boys and girls actually compete in two leagues. They actually compete in the uh, uh, Southwest Conference as well as the North Shore uh, Bowling Conference. And our girls actually won the first, uh, their first SWC championship uh, in school history. And actually our boys bowling team won the first North Shore Bowling Conference championship in school history. And, I know that the uh, boys basketball, I think that was the first league championship uh, dating back to the early 90s. So again, quite an accomplishment when you think about it from an athletic standpoint. And I, I sometimes find myself at our basketball games and thinking, wow, I, I wish we could have our normal crowds here because there probably would have been five or six nights where we would have sold out the gym and it would have been packed and the band would have been playing and, and all those kinds of things. Uh, but I quickly was reminded that uh, thankfully we had the opportunity to compete. And, uh, and I think that was one of our themes from, from the year, not focusing so much on what we couldn't do, but focusing on what we could do. And thankfully we were able to have an educational program that met the needs of students as well as we were able to have athletic teams that were able to compete for SWC championships, albeit in front of a much smaller crowd. So again, focusing on what we can, not what we can't do. And then I also wanted to just mention quickly here that you can see our student athletes in the many, many uh, honors and accomplishments. Uh, this is just a list of uh, student athletes, first team, second team, honorable mentions uh, across the board there in many different sports. Uh, just wanted you to, to see that and uh, cl clearly just so many kids uh, accomplishing so many great things uh, on the athletic fields and on the athletic courts and, and we certainly want to congratulate them. And I also wanted to mention that we did have uh, the following coaches who earned SWC Coach of the Year in their respective sports 
That was Pat Bray in boys basketball, David Dole in girls bowling, Steve Taylor in boys bowling, and Rob Glass in boys cross country. So again, congratulations, not just to our student athletes, but to our coaches as well. Now I want to turn it over to uh, Mrs. Walker to highlight some of the ways that our students are giving back to the community. Thank you, Mr. Sayers. So here in Amherst, one of the greatest things about our district is our community. And we feel very strongly about empowering our kids to learn what it's like to give back to the community and to be, you know, to build a culture of togetherness. And so one of the ways we've done that is through the expansion of our partnership with Lorain County Second Harvest Food Bank. We have monthly food distributions, virtual food drives, and pop-up mobile food pantries. And then students regularly volunteer to sort food, family and families throughout the district have donated goods to support the cause. We're so thankful for that support. It's a great experience for our students, and it's really been an opportunity for our school districts to come together to help and support other members within our community. Another example of engagement around this partnership comes from NORD, which challenged students to collect spare change to support the second harvest. Shout out to Mrs. Lining's homeroom. With her on-campus and e-campus students, the class set a goal to raise $1,000 in February. They surpassed their goal and they, ran, they ended up raising over $1,200. You can see the impact this is having our students, and they truly understand the benefit of what they're doing. We've had other initiatives along these same lines, such as the AJH Student Council Breaking a Difference after school in the fall, or the Leo Club encouraging members of the community to help them recycle 500 pounds of plastic for the creation of a bench by a trucks company. They did this last year, and the company created a bench that is now in front of City Hall. All of these experiences promote leadership and go a long way toward educating the whole child and helping them realize that they are capable of achieve, achieving and the difference that each individual can make. And now, I would like to introduce our treasurer, Ms. Amy Giafredo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I uh, just wanted to talk about some factors affecting our current finances in the district. Um, I'm going to kind of jump ahead. The next slide talks about the forecast or what the, the future looks like. And there are some really positive things that have happened this fiscal year um, that will provide a better, even more optimistic forecast than what we presented in November. State cuts, um, our basic aid, what we call foundation, was about one-fourth of what we projected last, last May. Um, local real estate revenue has remained strong last spring. Again, we were it was strongly recommended that we build delinquencies into our local tax collections. That, thankfully, has not come to fruition. And then federal stimulus do dollars have really changed the way it looks in the district this year. We have already received and spent two federal awards, and we are starting to spend the third award, and we are now planning to spend the fourth federal award. Um, and these are really substantial sums of money, these third and fourth um, revenue streams from the federal government. Um, so then, looking up, um, Looking ahead to, to this month, later this month, in two weeks, we'll be presenting the five-year forecast to the board. Um, it will look better, definitely, than uh, the previous predictions due to increased revenue and decreased expenditures. Um, more clarity, then, for future years will be coming um, in July with the biannual budget from the state, and that's a two-year budget, which will be for fiscal 22 and 23. But we are planning, um, from what, everything that we've heard from the state, that our foundation, our basic aid, will be very similar to what we're experiencing right now. The district remains financially sound through at least 2023. You've been hearing this. This is good that we continue um, to indicate that we have strong uh, financial condition in the district. We do have two upcoming levy renewals. 
um, operating issues that uh, will continue to be important to the financial condition of the district. And the thing that's really, really impressive to point out here is that, and I'm going to read my notes, we have a very highly qualified professional staff. And we continue to operate with great uh, financial performance, prudence of our public dollars, but we have such a talented staff and they teach our students so well that we are consistently in the top 20% of the state for performance. Our expenditures are in the bottom 20% of the state and our administrative costs are more than a third less than the state average. So this is just something that's really important for us to stress is that we've talked about our staff, we've talked about our students, we've talked about giving back, and we are really prudent and, and responsible with the public's dollars, and that's very important. Um, so I have nothing further this evening, and I'm going to turn it back to Superintendent Sayers to wrap things up. Thank you so much, Amy. And I uh, just want to kind of follow up on that. The financial information is such a key piece because not only do we want to provide a high quality program and high quality services uh, to our students, uh, but we want to do it as efficiently as possible. And uh, I love the uh, stat that Amy cited that indicates that uh, statewide our, our performance, our academic performance is in the top 20% of the state and yet we're spending uh, significantly less uh, than the state average and, and we think that represents a pretty good value and uh, we certainly want to keep that moving forward and uh, Amy had mentioned uh, being stable through at least 2023 and we're very hopeful and optimistic that uh, pending support, uh, the community support of these two renewal levies, uh, we're very optimistic that that period of uh, financial stability will continue beyond uh, 2023. That's certainly our goal. So again, Amy, thank you so much uh, for that update. And uh, in closing, I just want to kind of wrap things up and, and first and foremost say thank you to our students. Uh, our students, that's why we're here. Uh, we're here to serve our students and to serve our community. And, and uh, I want to thank our students for the, <laughs> the job that they have done this year. They have really adapted and adjusted to some very unique <laughs> circumstances and some very unique uh, procedures and schedules and just the way we had to do school this year, our students were just fabulous and uh, just did an outstanding job. So I wanna thank our students uh, for the work that they've done this year. I also wanna thank our staff. Uh, just again, incredible as I mentioned at the outset, adjusting, improvising, being creative, coming up with new and different ways of doing things. And many of those things are going to continue on. We're going to carry those things with us. And clearly, as a result of what we've had to work through this year, uh, we have become a better school district. I know I've had several staff members have mentioned that, that we're a better school district now than we were a year ago because of you know, the necessity and, and having to kind of work our way through this and, and look at things in new and creative ways. So again, I want to thank our staff. They, they uh, uh, in, in terms of dealing with adversity, our staff, I've seen it time and time again in my 13 years here, an almost uncanny ability uh, to deal with adversity and to make the, de uh, make the best a very uh, difficult and challenging circumstance. So uh, thank you to our staff. And then finally, I want to thank our community. It has been absolutely wonderful to see the way our community uh, has rallied behind our students, our staff, and uh, the, the emails, the text messages, the phone calls of support uh, from people throughout the community, not just parents, uh, but folks that have had uh, students that have graduated many years ago, from city leaders, from business leaders, just taking the time to express their, their support and their encouragement. And uh, this has been wonderful to see the way everyone has uh, rallied together uh, to, to really make the best of, of the 2020-21 school year and the challenges that, that we've had. Um, and it's really kind of interesting when you think about it. I know I've, I've been at this a while. It's my 34th year, and I can say, and I'm guessing many of you, uh, many of our staff can say that 
yes, it was probably the most challenging year that any of us have, have, have worked with or have went through. But at the same time, I think we can also say that it was a very meaningful and fulfilling and rewarding school year at the same time. And uh, it's because of the people uh, that we have here in Amherst, and we're very, very blessed uh, here in Comet Country. So again, thank you to our students, our staff, and our community. And that concludes uh, this evening's uh, State of Schools program. And I think we may have, uh, we're actually just under an hour. We were shooting for an hour, just under an hour. So if we have a question or two or, or three, we'd be happy to take those. Any questions at all? Okay, well, thank you again, everyone, for being here. And uh, this presentation will be posted uh, on our YouTube channel and will be available to the public uh, to view at, at their leisure and their convenience. So, again, thank you, everyone, for making it such a great year. And go, Cops.